Oh, Jesus. Hey, glad you came back. So look here. Uh, today we're making a hearty fall slash winter dish, right? We're doing baby lima beans, right? And ham hocks. These are smoked ham hocks. I know you're going to like this. Now, I've had to tweak it a bit for the peanut gallery. Um, and you'll see why as I do this. Hopefully I can give you some informational uh, knowledge so you can make this for yourself. But this is what we're doing. Look at this. Is that not nice? Oh my goodness. I'm going to try some. You know, truth be told, I was sampling while I was, while I was cooking. But only after I was starting to cook it after about four hours. If you watch the video, you'll see why I waited that long. Mm. Delicious. I hope you stick around and watch this. I know you're going to like it. Now, I really hope you try this for yourself. Watch how we do this. Hey, this is Charles Chiron. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. Now this part, when I eat beans here, I have about half a pound of our baby lima beans. And I have a bowl I'm going to be soaking them in. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, we have to sort through this. Okay, to get out all the, you know, the bad pieces of rocks and any debris we see. So get those big pieces out first. What you want to do, you have to spread out here. You know, you're just going to grab some, right? And what I like to do initially is just get rid of the real bad broke up pieces. Uh, it's just me. You don't have to do that. It's just me. You know, as I'm looking for rocks. Because as this is rehydrating, um, it's going to some we're going to split depending on how fresh the beans are. So you can't really avoid, you know, all the split up parts. But I just don't like to start with them being all split up. That was a little discolored, you don't want that. So you're looking for ones that don't fit. If, you, if you're not willing to eat it, don't cook it. See? We'll split. Split in half. This one's a different color altogether, so go are out. And so, you're just going to go through all these. And we'll be back. Okay, this is um, what we come up with. And these are the bits and pieces that I just didn't want. Okay, see the little chips, little, some little pieces of dirt and stuff in there, some debris. Didn't find any rocks this time. So they did a decent job at the factory, right? But there are a lot of chip pieces on here. And those chips probably just came from them being in the bag and being moved around getting broken up. Alright, so now let's get these bad boys soaking. I put water in it and let it soak, which is what I want. Now I'm just going to cover them. Got some little press and seal here. Gonna let these sit for at least eight hours. All right, so some people may ask, well, why do you soak the beans? 
right? These beans are dry, okay? They're not like the ones you get in the can that's already been processed. These are completely dry. So, um, you want to rehydrate them, okay? So we're gonna be soaking these uh, in the water, right, for a minimum eight hours, okay? You can take it overnight if you want, that's fine. Um, but I would start washing it any, for any time after uh, the 12 hour mark, okay? It's gonna alter the cook time at that point. But eight hours, you should be solid, right? These are baby lima beans, not really difficult. So sweet spot, between eight and 12, okay? And you'll be good to go. Now, once that time is up, we're going to rinse the bean, right? To get that extra debris off of it, right? And then we'll be ready to use it with the rest of our dish. So I'll see you in some hours. Someone posed a question to me. They wanted to know, can you eat um, the beans, the, the dried beans, can you eat them without cooking? Uh, the quick answer to, to that, if you want to get sick, sure, go for it. But no, you need to cook it, okay? That's that, one of the reasons uh, you want to do that is because to, as far as people go, okay, beans, they're poisonous, right? They're toxic, right? I'm not saying stay away from beans. What I'm saying is cook them, okay? Uh, especially, right, um, kidney beans, okay? It only takes a, a few raw kidney beans and you're gonna get food poisoning if it's not cooked, if they're not cooked. If they're undercooked, they can get you. If they're raw, they can get you. So cook them and cook them all the way through um, because what happens, uh, there are proteins that are in the beans, okay, that will really hurt the human body, okay? So when you soak them, it reduces some of that and some of that sugar and to help you, it helps with the digestion, okay? And then when you cook the beans all the way through, those proteins are destroyed. That's why you can eat them with no problem. But if you eat them raw, you're gonna have a bad day. So don't do that. So let's make sure we cook the food. Even though it's a vegetable, let's cook this. All right, our beans are done, done soaking. So they've doubled, tripled in size in some cases. Look at that now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm using a, a open strainer, right? Because I don't want to pour the water into the colander with the beans, you see? I want all the bad particles to stay in this, this bowl. So that's what we have. So we're gonna go rinse these off. But this is what's left. See the water's a little darker. There's a little bit of debris at the bottom. You want to get that off. And that's what the soaking does for you, okay? So let me go rinse these off and then we'll start with the uh, ham hocks. Our ham hocks we got here, they're smoked. We have two of them. Um, they have a combined weight of about three pounds or so, um, but that's irrelevant. Uh, you use as many or as much ham hocks as you want, okay? I like the meat. I want to be a lot of meat in here compared to the amount of beans, so I'm using two. And I've washed them. Even though they're cooked, I've washed them, right? They, and I'm going to put them in this pot, and we're going to cover these, right? We're going to cover them with water and we're going to let them boil on the stove for a half hour and we're going to we're going to pour that juice off or that water off and then we're going to start the true boil. Get the rest of our ingredients together. We're going to need some onion. About half of a medium onion. And we're going to dice it up thinly. Or dice it up, you know, finely. Not too fine, but you just don't want big chunks of onion, you know, in your beans. 
but you do want the flavor, so they have to be there. And they'll cook down too, so you don't have to worry too much about that. Getting our celery. We want to add some celery to this. So we're going to cut this guy down the middle. But we want this to be cut up small as well, you see? Some people get turned off by, you know, big chunks of celery in their food. So we're going to try to limit that for them. You know, this celery, this is, I don't know, about a good five inch pieces of stock. We're just going to chop it up small and again this is going to break down too as it cooks. That's another reason we're cutting it so small because we want it to kind of break down and somewhat disintegrate right in the beans all right let's get everything laid out so you can see what we're working with you may ask yourself now why do we boil it for 30 minutes before we actually use it okay because we're boiling meat, right? On that first 30 minute boil, all the impurities, if there are any impurities, excess fat, excess salt, it'll come up to the top, okay? So during this part, you don't want to stir it up, just let it do what it's got to do, and then we're going to pour that off. And then we can add fresh water or fresh broth, and then your main ingredients for your cooking, so you can get the best product that you can make. So let's check on those uh, ham hocks and see how that boiling is going. Now we have about 10 minutes left, but you see it's, it's boiling pretty good. See there's a little bit of stuff on top, but that's going to go away. We want a nice clear broth, um, but yet flavorful for our dish. So we're going to be pouring this out in about 10 minutes. Then put the lid back on here, and of course we're going to watch it. 10 minutes, we'll strain it, and we'll, we'll take these out and pour off the liquid. And then we'll show you the lineup of how we're gonna start uh, boiling this next, or stewing it as it were. This next part, we're gonna need some sugar. This is about a tablespoon and a half of sugar, okay? We need about two teaspoons of uh, black pepper, ground black pepper, about a tablespoon of paprika, now, if you don't have paprika, you don't want to use paprika, uh, just dice up some um, bell pepper and you'll be good. We have three tablespoons of butter. We have six chicken bouillon cubes. Now, these are the mini ones, six of those. We have two minced garlic cloves, right? We have our celery that we diced up. We have our onion that we diced up some olive oil so we can saute the vegetables. And of course, we have our ham hocks that we just took out of the pot. We just poured the water off. So now let's go back and start sauteing this stuff in that pot. So what we're gonna do, got the pot back on the oven, got back on the stove, a couple tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna add our celery. Add our onions. There we go. Get it all mixed up. Start sauteing these bad boys. Add our garlic.
Now you're not trying to brown this, you see. We're just sweating them. That's all we're doing. Just giving them a head start because once we add the, the liquid and we start braising this stuff, it's not going to matter that we did this. But I'm just in the habit of doing this, right? Add our paprika. Just mixed in. Yeah, like I was saying, if you don't have paprika, just throw some bell peppers in here. You'll be fine. Add our butter. Add our pepper. Now we're going to add a, just a couple cups of water to start. Because we want to add a bouillon cube, all six of them, and our sugar. So we're going to put the lid on this. We're going to let this come to a boil for about four minutes, and then we'll be back. By this time, it should be boiling quite nicely. The chicken broth, the bouillon cubes, should have broken down by now. Now, we add the ham hocks back here. Be careful. These guys are still hot. Yep, want that juice too. Now we're going to add water to it to cover the ham hocks. Yep, we need more than that. Alright, so I put a total of eight cups of water in here. Now we're gonna put the lid on and let this cook. Once this comes to a boil, we're gonna turn it down to low and just let it simmer for about an hour and a half. We have the stuff on the stove top in the pot, okay? We're gonna bring this up, like I said, to a boil. Once it starts boiling, we're gonna put it down to low, medium low, and we're gonna just let it simmer for about an hour and a half, okay? At that time, we're going to add the beans back to it. Now, the ham hocks, they won't be done, right? But they, they will become done as the beans cook. Now, the beans are going to take about an hour and a half to two hours themselves to cook. So, you're going to get an extended time, total time of about four hours that the ham hocks would have been on the heat, okay? So, I'll see you in a little bit. So we have the ham hocks in the pot. All the ingredients are in there just about. Um, we're gonna let it come up to a boil. Now, once it comes up to a boil, right, we're gonna turn it down to low, okay? And we're gonna let it simmer for about an hour and a half. Right, so that's gonna give us a total time up to that point for the ham hocks of two hours. Now, from there, we're gonna add the lima beans to it. Now, the lima beans are gonna take about an hour and a half to two hours to cook themselves. So that's going to give an extended total time for the ham hocks of four hours. They should be very tender. Now after the total, the, the first two hours of the ham hock, they may not be as tender as you like. They're, they're not for me. I like them to be fall apart. The ham hocks. I know we don't do that with me, but ham hocks I do. Okay, so when you hit that four hour mark, four hour mark, you should be good to go. Let's get to it. Look, and as always, don't go too far away from your stove, right? Even though it's not a real good chance that it's gonna overflow, come check it out from time to time. Every five, 10 minutes, give it a look. Now, at this point, when it, before you add the beans, you can stir it up. But once you add the beans, I don't recommend you stirring it, you stirring it up or stirring it up. 
I don't recommend you stir it up too much because you'll break the beans and it'll just make the sauce way thicker than it has to be. Okay? So remember, every five, 10 minutes, check it out, check on it, do a little stir for just this portion until it gets ready for the beans. All right, so time's up for this. Now, we need to add my beans. Get our beans here. Pop them in. Get them all around. Okay. Spoon. Turn this meat over one more time. Well, we're going to be turning it again, but this in. Okay, now we're going to let this go for about an hour and a half to two hours. Now, just like before, this final stretch of the hour and a half to two hours, we're going to be checking it every 10 minutes until it's done, okay? Um, you don't want to agitate it too much when you're moving stuff around. You do want to move it, but be careful. Try not to break up the beans. Because if you do, the sauce is going to get really thick, right? The, break, the, the beans are going to break up. Um, so you want to try to avoid that. If you can get some solid pieces, that's what you want. It's tricky. It can be done. Sometimes you can't do it all the time, but if you can pull it off, it looks wonderful. So let's get this going. And I'll, from time to time, you know, I may show you guys uh, where we're at until it's done. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. You know how it works. So, as you can see, the beans going good. The meat's starting to come apart from the bone, which is what we want. But you notice I'm not really push. I'm not really churning up the beans. I'm, I'm, I'm moving the ham hock okay and that's what you want I'm not trying to crush up the beans I'm trying to be as delicate as I can and I suggest you do the same after your beans have been soaking right you, you've had them soaking for over eight hours right um, so they they swole up a bit right you've cleaned them you've added them to the broth but they still want to be tough right Hey, they're the bullies of the playground. They're going to be tough. So you put them in your pot with the hot broth, your flavorful broth, right? With your ham hocks or whatever meat you may have. You might use turkey. Whatever you use, you got it in there, right? But after about that 40-minute mark, they can't fight anymore. They get mad. And when they get mad, what they do, they take a, a deep breath and, and they suck up all that juice, that flavor. And they swell up just a little bit more and start getting more tender. And they just look you right in the face when you open up the lid. They're like, yeah, yeah, you suck. I didn't want to do that. But you made me suck up the flavor, so I hope you're proud of yourself. And you know what? I'm proud of myself. Put in that work, Bean. Put in that work. So we're going to keep this going. And I'll let you know uh, when it's just about done. Or what I'm gonna do when it's just about there. Stay with me. All right, so this little you know, hour and a half is up here. We're gonna remove the ham hock carefully because it, it's real tender. All right? This guy here just completely fell apart. Look at that. We're removing this because we're going to take the, the meat off. The reason I'm doing that is because the peanut gallery, they don't like the skin. Okay? So I have to remove it. If I don't remove it, they won't eat it. Okay? Now we're going to keep this going, 
turn it on as low as it can go. And we're gonna let this keep percolating. We're gonna let the meat cool down for about 10 minutes. And then we're gonna start tearing it apart to reintroduce it back to the beans. Now, because the uh, ham hocks are hot, right? I'm gonna be putting my inserts on. I don't know if you guys notice me using these when I do my barbecue, but yeah. These are inserts that go under my gloves. To give me a barrier, an extra barrier of heat protection. So I'm not trying to burn myself. If you want your own setup like this, hey, look at the description. Nine times out of ten, I probably got a link down there for you. So you can get your own. But pay attention to the size before you order it, okay? And when you do so, it really supports the channel, so it's really appreciated. So let's start tearing this hammock apart. All right, so basically all we're doing is we're just taking the meat, right? And we're just shredding it, almost like pulled pork, right? You're just tearing it apart. Because we're gonna add it back to the beans, you see? In my case, I'm also pulling the fat away because the peanut gallery won't eat the fat. So I have to you know, pull that off. With an extra step, that's fine, you know. Let's get that all pulled off. They don't eat the skin at all. So in my case, I don't have to worry about whether I'm gonna put the skin in or not because they won't eat it. The bone, I can get some little pieces of meat if so. If not, the bone will just stay there. But it's just a little piece of shredded meat, like this. Then I'm just shredding it, just tearing apart. And it's so tender, it's real easy to tear this apart. Look how easy it just tears apart. It's crazy. So tender. Flavorful. You hardly grab it good. Because it just wants to, to just tear apart, just flake apart. Now, if I was trying to do this without these gloves and the inserts, I'd be having a bad day right now. There'll be a whole lot of beeping and censorship going on right now, I can tell you that. Yep, pull that skin right off. Get to the meat. Now for you that like the, the fat, hey, keep it in there. Keep it in there. I just pull it off because the peanut gallery won't eat it. You see? You have to know your audience. A little piece of ligament, yeah, they won't eat that either. They'll spit it right out in your face with no problems. Just disrespect them. Yep, let's break that up. A little pieces there. See how it just falls apart? See that? Go back through, see if we can get some other little, strand, little strands of meat. Little strands. Okay, now we're going to add this back to the beans. Let's add our ham hocks that's been shredded back to the beans. back on, put it on medium low, and we're going to let this go for 15 minutes, and it'll be time to plate up. 
See you in 15. All right, take my taste and chop sticks. See what we got here. Oh yeah, this is good. Let's go ahead and plate it up here in a minute. Let's get this bad boy plated up here. I'm using a wide strainer because I don't want all the juice at first. I want to make sure I get a good ratio of lima bean and meat. Okay? In. Yes. In. There we go. Now, I want to follow that with a, a large spoon so I can get some juice, some sauce. Right on it. All right. Let's clean this up and see what we got. Here we go. Oh, baby lima beans. Smoked ham hocks. Oh, this is delicious. You know, it's a fairly easy recipe to pull off. You know, if you like this, hey, try it out yourself. Comment below, give me a thumbs up. Right, share it out if you can. Also, if you're not a subscriber already, hey, subscribe. Hey, join the peanut gallery. You know our arms are open and we'll leave the light on for you so you won't get lost when you're trying to find us. Also, if we're not connected on Instagram, come on man, go to Instagram, put my name in, Straw Shiraw, look for the gray cat, and let's connect. And again, share me out, it's appreciated. That being said, I'm about to get in on a hearty, hearty baby lima bean and ham hock dish. Yes, it's a side dish, but it is a big side dish. Hope you enjoy it.